Thank you very much, uh, Victor. Uh, hello, everyone out there. Uh, it's like my name is Jim Delcusis. Uh, I'll go to my first slide and introduce uh, myself and shortly uh, Joe Wattersetter. So, um, very briefly in relation to myself, um, I'm currently the founder and CEO of Pursuit, um, and uh, my previous life has been uh, as a law firm partner the last seven or so years with DLA Piper. So very briefly in relation to that, um, what I'd learnt um, uh, during, or some of the things I learnt during my career was um, some of the pain points that I had seen, uh, even from a client perspective in relation to uh, buying of outside council services, and, and some of those pain points were actually shared with law firms, the clunkiness and emails and spreadsheets and so forth. Um, uh, so that was really um, the time that started me thinking about uh, what the future looked like. And at the same time, we saw technology um, uh, start changing the buyer and seller relationships and buyer benefits, um, such as choice, relationship intelligence, competition and digitization and centralization of data. So that really started the journey for me um, in relation to pursuit. So um, that's a little bit of background on myself. Um, uh, I'll introduce Joe, but just before doing so, I might just make a couple of um, comments which I think will be obvious to most of you. Uh, the, the first one, as you can see from uh, the pictures, some of us like Joe, uh, better up close and personal, well, whereas others like myself are, are better from a distance. Um, so, and the second obvious point, uh, most of you will know um, uh, Joe from 3M. He's um, got an, uh, a well-deserved and strong reputation amongst the ACC uh, community, and um, I'm very, very pleased, Joe, to have you joining us uh, in uh, our our discussion today. So, hi, Joe, are you there? I am indeed. Thanks, Jim. Um, it's very kind of you. And uh, I, I would just, um, first of all, thank Catherine Moynihan from ACC who arranged our introduction now about four months ago. And um, yep. I've, I've appreciated the opportunity to get to know you and to, um, and to see the tool that you're going to share with this group today. I think it is um, as I've said uh, before, elegantly simple, um, and it aligns with what we're interested in at 3M, which is creating competition for significant matters in a way that gives us um, a tool that people will actually use and, um, and on the back end provide useful information in a visually appealing way. So um, I'm glad to contribute in any way I can. Uh, my interest in joining the call really is to Get more people involved in uh, in not only convergence for convergence sake, but but creating effective competition for um, for in-house business. Fantastic, Joe. That, 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 that's great. And as I said, we're uh, very happy to have you um, join us. It's a real um, it's a real coup for us. Okay, so I might um, uh, launch and set the scene a little bit um, with um, some trends. Uh, that some recent surveys have talked about um, and identified in relation to the um, in-house legal industry and how it's changing. And I've identified some of those key trends there. So um, the first one, aligning corporate business strategies. Um, we know that captures what business units often um, tell us, you know, you need to understand our business objectives um, and, and I'm hearing more and more from um, the GCs of major corporates about um, having to uh, adopt and the team adopting a business mindset. And the context here is very important too because technology is forcing business units to really find opportunities to uh, improve uh, their speed, scalability, and cost efficiencies. And I think we're now starting to see that as these surveys are demonstrating. So th those kind of pressures also um, within the in-house uh, legal team. It really brings me to the second point. What One of the ways that certainly business teams are 
um, starting to find those opportunities of speed and cost efficiencies is through data, um, capturing and leveraging data, um, and we're seeing more and more of that, uh, more and more of that in, in the legal space, and um, legal teams looking to centralise data, which is often in silos, and 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 then leveraging that uh, to unlock um, uh, insights into the business. Um, the third one, uh, no surprises there, technology um, to help um, uh, with speed and scale. And we've seen um, certainly in the last five years a, a proliferation of um, legal um, startup and related technology to help the in-house teams. And then two more trends. Um, competition amongst law firms, which of course Joe just talked about, and, and use um, of um, AFAs, or particularly uh, fixed price uh, arrangements, and those last two being particularly um, close to the um, uh, uh, heart of pursuit, I suppose. Okay, um, next, so what does that mean in the context of buying outside council services? Um, again, delivering predictability cost and cost efficiencies, and we think the solutions that will um, uh, capitalise on, on those four um, points we've identified there are the ones that are going to win the day. So the first is relationship intelligence um, in relation to the management and tracking of your um, of the buying of your external council services. So understanding, you know, who your favourites are, um, who the organisations use, what practice areas, what you're buying and where, and, and being able to centralise that under a single platform. The second point is just budget management, um, uh, a solution which will help you, you know, drive competition uh, and produce more predictable pricing, particularly through the AFAs. Real-time um, insights from, from data and Finally, and we think this is one of the most important, is um, a platform which is just intuitive, so it's easy to use um, amongst the, the legal team. We know typically lawyers might not be the first um, or the early adopters or, or the most tech savvy, so um, solutions that make it as easy as possible um, for uh, for them to uh, to see the benefits and also to share internally and we'll talk about some of the features there of being able to um, uh, leverage um, from the benefit from the work that others have done internally within the legal team and be able to share that okay uh, and those uh, those in-house teams that are um, adopting that mindset what are they achieving There's some examples there you know significant savings in the um, in their outside council spend of around 30%, a, a very significant increase in efficiency in going from um, the first point of issue in RFP to, to final firm selection. A, a host of data points that can help you um, tell your story both to the finance team and put you on the front foot, if you like, with the finance team. Um, as well as the compliance story of being dem able to demonstrate um, the whys and hows of um, the external legal spend. Um, and, uh, and finally, um, an immediate return on your investment, and I'll show you some examples of how um, uh, you can achieve savings and, um, uh, on a single RFP that will co cover the cost of the entire solution. Okay, who are some of the companies leading the pack? Um, we've got 3M there, and I'll let Joe talk a bit about that. Um, Walmart, um, I think, set up their legal ops department only about three years ago, but since that time have forged ahead with a number of data-driven and tech-enabled initiatives um, that uh, I know Alan Bryan from the legal ops team there spoke about recently um, to a seminar or a conference to the Buying Legal Council. Um, Microsoft, we've heard quite a bit of them in the last couple of months. 
uh, now seeking to move to 90% of their external legal work um, into AFAs and principally um, a fixed cost arrangements. Um, and then GSK, who were really the early pioneers um, on the um, on creating competition amongst the panel firms through the reverse auction um, uh, feature of their uh, of their platform. So uh, that's something we'll talk a little bit about and show you uh, on the pursuit platform. But um, uh, before moving on, Joe, um, it'd be I'm sure everyone would. Um, uh, love to hear from you. You know, w w which of the points I talked about perhaps resonated um, or resonate with 3M, or some that I haven't, and also perhaps w whether there was a trigger point um, for 3M in deciding to um, pilot with Pursuit. Yeah, there was, and um, what distinguishes Pursuit for me uh, is that it is not. Um, is not premised on hourly-based billing. Um, we had looked at other tools. In fact, I'd been searching for a tool for more than two years and, and had given up and was about to embark on creating our own uh, when um, Jim and I first started talking. And what I like about Pursuit is that it aligns with our interest to move away from ours. We're at about 80% non-hourly or what we call custom fee agreements uh, at present. And the tools that we had looked at that are off the shelf would all be based on 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 time. And uh, what I like about this is that we could customize the phases and price them out on a non-hourly basis. And so that was useful for us. Um, you know, to to the point, I, you know, I can't speak to the average percentage of savings. What I can tell you is that it's not uncommon to see tremendous variability uh, among firms for the same matter in the way they price it. Um, and and I don't have a good explanation other than there isn't a structured market for the pricing of legal services. And so what we often find is, is these wide swings in variability that is based not only on expertise but on, frankly, capacity or capacity of the individual who is leading the response for the firm that we're asking. Um, our, our approach has not been to um, squeeze every nickel out of the procurement. We, we, we have taken a decision not to do reverse auctions, for example, though I, I understand this tool is capable of, of enabling that. What we're really interested in is, is zeroing in on what the price might be uh, and, then, um, and then using that as, as relevant data in ultimately reaching uh, a fee agreement. So um, I, I, that's frankly the reason for our, our interest. Um, the, other, the other reason is, is the user interface. Um, in my experience um, here, people we have a lot of tools that people don't use because the user interface is, is foreboding. Uh, and I think we all are informed by our at-home experience, and we don't expect to have to do two hours of training before we pick up a tool. And, um, and for me, at least, the tool seems um, quite intuitive and easy to use. So I'll stop there and... Uh, I don't know if we'll have time for questions at the end. If we do, I'll be glad to answer any questions that people on the call might have. Thanks very much, Owen. Just one point to pick up on. The, the variability in pricing from comparable firms, if you like, in relation to the same scope of work has probably been the most surprising um, uh, feature for um, uh, for actually ourselves and and um, a, a number of the clients dealing with um, pursuit. So um, uh, I think on average we've got about the 35% differential between the highest um, and the accepted price on the platform. And, and I think that there's a number of factors that um, uh, that uh, go into that. One is you just never know. <laughs> Um, unless you ask more than one firm. Two, there, there can be capacity in firms that, that you don't know about. And three, you know, um, firms can be very uh, very keen uh, to do the work, particularly of the branded corporates out there. So um, that's one of the mantras of pursuit. You don't know unless you unless you ask. Okay, um, so, so there's just some examples of um, corporates leading the way um, with you know data-driven and, and tech-enabled initiatives. Okay, 
um, jumping then into a, a demonstration um, of some of the features of Pursuit. So basically, it's a web um, based cloud hosted um, uh, platform. So you'll have your um, uh, an email address and a password. So your login details. And then once you log in, I'll just um, as a client, um, here is a client view of basically your home page, and I have the, a firm view um, in the screen sitting behind, so I'll be able to go both from the client firm view and show you what both look like. Okay, so just scrolling down here, each one of these um, cards, if you like, is a request or an RFP, um, and which can be sorted you know, according to their different state, draft, open proposals, closed, etc. And to create a request, really quite simple, just move to create request. Um, and then once you've done that, you're presented essentially with uh, templates for completion. Um, so um, two, so you'll have your law firms that you can choose uh, and lawyers that you can choose. Um, so typically we'll configure so so that um, you'll have your panel firms or you can simply put someone's email address direct um, into the to field. Subject, um, so a re, a summary of what you're looking for and basically being able to attach uh, whatever documents you like to form part of the RFP. Um, and then pricing questionnaires. Um, a conflict checkability and some settings. So what I'll do is I'll run through each of these um, and show you what a draft looks like. But essentially, you'll be able to ask pricing questions. You'll be able to ask any other questions, do a conflict check, um, and ask ask firms to do a check before they get to see the full RFP, and then be able to um, uh, choose some of the settings which I'll run through. So that's the that's what you're presented with when you click Create Request. Um, let me show you. Uh, one that I've started drafting, so I've just jumped into a draft here. Um, so a, a re um, description um, here. I've attached a file, in this case, complete filings for a patent infringement case. And I'll show you some examples of the kind of pricing questions you might ask. Um, questions in relation to rates and for phases of work. To show you how that is actually created. Simply, you add an item. You can then choose whether you're asking for a timekeeper rate or a particular phase. What kind of fee arrangement you're looking for for that particular? Am I looking for hourly rates, success, cap, fixed, and then a description um, of what you're after, so the law firms can respond to that description. So. That's how you create your pricing item. Here are three examples um, that I've created here. So I'm asking here for a partner rate. I've chosen hourly rates, and I've asked, please provide us with the hourly rates of the partner. They'll be running the litigation on a day-to-day basis. So there's an example of asking a rate question. Asking for an early case assessment. Um, so again, just put in the description what you're looking for. Choose what kind of pricing arrangement, a fixed fee, and then um, whatever question you're asking. In this case, we'd like an early case assessment with a percentage prospect of success, and we'd like that in 30 days. Please provide us with a fixed fee um, for that phase of work. And then, Joe mentioned before, phases of litigation. So you can just choose to describe a phase of litigation, what kind of fee arrangement, again, fixed fee arrangement, and then describe here um, what uh, what that phase constitutes. So that's our price request builder, if you like. Um, and uh, by choosing, again, making it easy for you as, um, as the client to choose you know, fixed fee or alternative fee arrangements, we think that will help with you know, the the objective of a number of corporates to move towards more fixed fee arrangements. So that's the pricing part. We've got a questionnaire builder essentially, um, which enables you to ask law firms any questions. And again, really simple. You just add a question. You can just put in your title of the question, whether you want a short text, paragraph, 
yes or no answer, and then a description of what your question is. So simple, and here's some examples um, of the kind of questions you might ask. Assumptions, so ask assumptions, a paragraph answer, and please list the specific some assumptions that form the basis of your pricing. Um, again, the question about what exclusions um, uh, or limitations exist in relation to the law firm's proposal, who the team is, um, please provide us with a description of your team, and then being a little bit more encouraging, a bit more ambition, there's no reason why you can't be asking um, for law firms to use on, you know, for example, what are the key factors, what do you regard as the, the key factors for um, uh, success, in this case for ABC to be able to successfully defend this litigation. Um, a little cheeky question here um, to the law firms, what would you ask if you were ABC and you were choosing um, a law firm to, um, uh, to uh, run this litigation? So your question builder, you can ask as many or as few questions as you like. Um, I mentioned the conflict check. This enables you as a client to essentially identify who the counterparties are and what information you want the law firms to know when they're clearing conflicts. And the importance of this feature is until the law firm has cleared conflicts on their side, they won't be able to see um, the full RFP. And then finally, request settings feature. Here you can choose your work category, and this is configurable. So as the client, you will configure what work categories um, you have and perhaps across regions. So you can then start collecting um, data in relation to those work categories when buying, um, uh, when it relates to buying outside council services. And also we have a feature here of choosing whether or not you wish to enable a reverse auction and we'll show you what that looks like. And if you do enable that, a start and an end date, choosing just a start and an end date for that reverse auction. So that's essentially how you draft your request. A couple of features to show you also. You can always preview to see what your, what your RFP is looking like and what it will look like when it's received by law firms. Make sure you're comfortable. Do your conflict check preview to make sure that this is what the invited firms will see before they've cleared conflicts. So make sure you're providing the right conflict information and um, not providing confidential information before conflicts are cleared. And also the ability to share internally um, your requests. So you can just basically share with any of your team members. And once you've done that, your team members will have access to the RFP and you'll be able to collaborate and communicate through a, a comments channel that we create, so a private channel which everyone within um, the legal team that's, that, that's been invited to share the request will have access to. Okay, so that's the drafting. What does it look like once I've issued um, a request? So I'll, I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, so I'll just sort here by open to proposals. And here's an example of an RFP that's been issued. Okay, so I can see who I've sent it to. And this is a blind CC field. So the lawyers at these law firms will not see um, who else has been invited, only that they've been invited. Um, scrolling down, this is what this is the request or the RFP that's been drafted. Um, and then when proposals are submitted by law firms, this is what you see essentially. You see an apples and apples comparison um, of the law firm responses in relation to each of the, the pricing questions that you asked about um, and all the other questions, your assumptions, exclusions and team. Um, and of course, the benefit of here is taking you out of what typically would happen manually where you'd receive Word or PDF documents or glosses from the law firms. You'd print them out and then you'd start essentially creating an Excel spreadsheet to do an apples and apples comparison. So we do that for you and take that 
that pane away. You can export um, uh, this comparator to Excel. And importantly also, we provide you with a scorecard feature so that you can essentially create your own scorecard in relation to each RFP, and that's really simple. You just You simply choose what category um, or what criteria um, you're looking to evaluate the weight on that criteria. Um, and in this case, expertise, previous relevant experience, pricing. Um, it's quite simple. Again, you just simply add your category, choose what that category of criteria is, what the weighting you wish to apply, um, and then um, and then you'll have your scorecard, if you like, or criteria created. And then it's just a question of um, assessing each proposal by reference to the criteria um, that you've chosen. And in our case, we've chosen a, a star system um, and um, you'll see an overall score, um, which is reflected of the weighting um, that you've identified. And so you can do that um, and then that will then be captured, if you like, um, for all, um, uh, for, for anyone to share with internally. On that sharing, you could, uh, I mentioned before, we create a comments channel internally, but we also create comments channels with a private one with each of the law firms um, that you've invited so that you can communicate uh, with those law firms in relation to, let's say, any queries or questions concerning the RFP. If you get the same question from uh, multiple law firms, then you might wish to use the basically the clarification feature, which is a um, notification that goes out to everyone you know, clarifying uh, the request. So insert your clarification here, whatever files or additional documents you wish to issue to the law firms, and then you simply add clarification. Um, another feature here is um, you, you can at any time copy and essentially create a template of your RFP. So you wish to duplicate this request. Yes, I'll create a copy of this request. And that essentially just copies your RFP. You can then, let's say, save as a great RFP template. Save that. Um, and then that basically forms, I'll just sort here, that basically then forms part of um, your um, uh, your home page here. And that's something, that's a template now that can be shared with anyone um, within the team. And so you can then start building um, a, a library of templates for your your law firm requests or your RFPs. Okay, um, so I've shown quite a bit about uh, on the client view, what does the um, law firm view look like? I'll just move here to show you a, a law firm view. In this case, Michael from Bradley Arendt, um, all of the requests that he's been invited to. The first one I'll show you is one where um, conflicts has not been cleared. So you can see the very first thing that um, the law firm will see. So in this case, Michael will see that he's received a request from Jim from ABC Corp. Michael can share internally with any of his um, team members. Um, and then he basically sees simply the conflict information. So the title and what a, whatever conflict information has been provided by the client to enable um, Michael to clear conflicts. Once, um, if he's satisfied conflicts have been cleared, he'll just click on yes, we've cleared conflicts. He'll be asked, are you sure your firm has cleared conflict, conflicts? And he'll say yes. Once he's done that, he'll be able to see the full RFP. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like here. Here's an example of where conflicts have been cleared. So you can see 
Um, Michael has his own communication channel, so everyone, anyone that he shares this um, RFP with will have access to that channel, taking communications out of email and trying to centralise it on the platform. And also the private communication with the client um, that has invited uh, Michael to respond to the RFP. Um, Michael has the same the same RFP view, so he'll be able to see um, what the client um, sees uh, on the request. And Michael seeks to goes to respond and create a proposal. Does that all on the platform? So really simple, create proposal, and then put in a heading. He'll then essentially respond to each of the pricing questions. Um, and other questions that have been asked. So total price, how Bradley Arendt will meet your objectives, and then responding to each of the pricing and other questions that he's been asked. Once he does that, this is what Michael will see. Um, and remembering that this is an example where um, I've engaged the reverse auction feature. So Michael will be able to see on an anonymised basis, basically, the competing um, uh, law firm pricing. He won't be able to see who the law firms are, but where he um, uh, or Bradley Aaron ranks in this particular example. So you can see in this example, um, it's coming second. There's a, um, a pricing which is more competitive and one which is less competitive. Um, he won't be able to see the answers to any of the questions. It's just it's just the pricing, the anonymised pricing that he can see. Um, looking at from a client perspective, just so that marries up, if I show you, um, this is the this is the request. Moving to proposals, you can see here um, that Bradley Arendt is coming second in terms of being. Most price competitive at 1.075. And if Michael chooses, in light of this competition, to revise his price, it's very simple. Clicks revise price. And let's say chooses a figure which is 5% lower at 1.025, mean revises price. And then you'll see um, he jumps into first rank. Um, uh, as being the most competitive price. And then that changes real time for the client view. So the client can now see um, that the last bid was a few seconds ago and that Michael now um, from Bradley Arendt is, um, is in the most competitive. At any time, the client can see the full details um, of each, uh, each proposal from a law firm, so just click into details, can, and it can also see the full price history. Um, and we think that's very important too, um, particularly given that um, uh, demonstrating value on the platform is the starting price, being able to see what that starting price is and how that price changes um, uh, is certainly an important measurable for and data point uh, for clients. Um, okay, I, I might now move to show um, a little bit about the data and the analytics uh, that the platform captures. So I'm back here on the client view page, and if I just move to the analytics, here's the kind of information that um, we're able to report on. So the number of requests or RFPs being issued, the total fees agreed, for those requests, and importantly, the savings, um, which we define as the differential between the highest price and the accepted price on any particular RFP, and being able to demonstrate that over a period of a month, 12 months, or over all time. Um, and, uh, and we think this is an important, and certainly the feedback that we've had is this is an important um, uh, measurable and data point for clients to be and in-house legal teams to be demonstrating back to, for example, finance or the business teams um, that 
that competitive pricing is being achieved um, in relation to the external engagements. Okay, the next um, uh, analytics or data points we show are uh, fee type arrangements. So being able to see over a period of time what kind of fee arrangements, capped, fixed, hourly or other, um, you, you as a client uh, um, are achieving. And again, particularly important for uh, for those corporates who have got who are targeting, um, let's say, a, a certain percentage of AFAs for for their legal work and being able to external work and being able to track how they're doing on a month to month basis. Bit of a savings trend analysis, which um, which arises from data on the platform, which has shown us that the more law firms you're inviting, then typically the greater the savings that you're achieving, being the greater the differential between the highest um, and the accepted price. Um, so we show you that data and, and show you how it looks um, uh, when, you're, when you're inviting more law firms. Um, and also being able to give you a bit of a heat map to show a correlation between how successful your law firms are being and the savings you're achieving with those law firms. So for this hypothetical example, um, Cravass is winning seven out of 10 bids, um, uh, but the average savings, that is, you're only achieving typically 11% below uh, the highest price being submitted for that particular, um, on those particular uh, matters. And there may be good explanation for that. It may be that Cravass is typically engaged for the um, the high value important bet the company work and that you're only inviting one or two law firms for that work. But again, a data point which will enable all data points that will enable you to um, compare how your firms are doing and compare the savings that you're achieving um, uh, with those firms. Um, and I should also mention those that kind of um, data and analytics, being able to break that down into the, the work types and categories that I showed earlier um, that you as a corporate would configure at the beginning and then being able to capture um, data in accordance with those work categories and, and for example, regions too. Um, okay, uh, what I might, I think, what I might do now, Joe, I don't know if there's any particular point um, or, or anything you want to highlight from from that run through but the, uh, the next point I was going to do, um, come back to is or come to is some of the feedback that we've received no nothing specific I think people would rather hear from you okay. and see more of the tool cool um, okay um, might just move to some of the feedback that I'd like to talk of, uh, uh, about um, the, the easy and intuitive, that's um, easy to say. Uh, I think Joe had mentioned once to me, but hard to do. Um, it is really important for us to try um, and make the tool as easy and intuitive as possible. And that's some of the feedback that we've had so far. So that's been um, something we're, that, that we're happy with. But it's something that we're constantly working on. So getting feedback from um, customers, both at the client and the firm end, is something that we're keen on. Um, the analytics side seems to um, have hit a chord um, with a number of um, the clients that we've been speaking to, um, uh, as does the reverse auction. So the reverse auction, I mentioned before that GSK had really led the, has led the way in the past. Um, but I, I think what we're seeing certainly from our experience on the platform so far, by making that that functionality quite easy. Um, uh, we've had some feedback that it's starting to become a little bit addictive. <laughs> um, pr procurement, uh, this is quite an important um, point here. So um, uh, often within corporates, and I'm sure each of you will know, procurement, it's typically there's one of three roles procurement might play. Um, uh, one, uh, it might have a, a role above a certain threshold. Um, uh, or, or two, um, it might uh, essentially be collaborating, if you like, um, with the legal team and helping 
uh, on the RFP stage, or, or thirdly, it's looking to collaborate. So the kind of feedback that we've had um, early on is actually both ways from the legal teams that um, um, they're getting a much ha happier procurement team and from the procurement teams um, that they're pleased at being able to see a, a tool that's scaling um, and able to be used easily um, uh, by those in the legal team who are engaging outside counsel. Um, the next point about helping the legal team um, move up the work value chain, what do we mean by that? Well, we've seen some um, clients getting quite good at now being able to bundle up and send out um, their, their lower value, perhaps more process-driven and commoditized work and being able to send that and get competitive pricing in relation to that work. And um, by doing that, um, uh, the in-house team is then able to focus on the more high-value um, strategic work, um, uh, which um, uh, which clearly they want to be spending more time on and uh, being um, uh, closer to the business teams by focusing on that um, high-value strategic work. And a little bit of feedback from the law firms, and Joe, I'm going to come back to to ask you a question here, but certainly the, the, the feedback we've had so far from law firms actually on the platform is that it has saved them time um, and let them focus on what clients really want to know rather than what has typically happened in the past where um, a, a lot of time has been spent on the glossy stuff, um, uh, which um, is not necessarily as focused as what the client needs for its particular um, its particular requirement. But, Joe, the question I did want to raise with you is one that um, I think we raised in the initial notes um, on um, on this webinar and one that I do get asked by clients um, quite a bit, which is um, what do the law firms say or how do we think this is going to infect uh, or affect uh, the, the law firm relationships? Um, so I'd be interested in what your your initial thinking is on that topic, um, uh, Joe. Well, you know, my my sense is that they will not um, they'll not have a problem with this tool, um, and I say that for two reasons. Number one, they're all dealing with RFPs today, and um, what happens, at least as far as I've been told, is that um, there's a 26 year old um, person in business development that has the unenviable job of compiling all the yep. stuff that goes back to the client. Um, yeah. And um, we we actually, um, one of the things that I think is useful about this tool is that um, it can be forwarded and shared. And we tried um, in our last selection uh, to use a survey tool. And what we found is that uh, while it worked somewhat for us, we didn't have the um, – the download feature, the, the comparison feature that Pursuit has. Um, but it definitely did not work for the firms because what they're used to doing is is allocating responsibility for specific yeah. RFP questions. Um, and this allows them to do that. So that's useful. Um, the other thing is it, it does actually cut through and, and allow you to focus on what truly does matter. Um, and for us, what I envision us doing is aligning um, the areas, or at least the scorecard with our KPI, so that we'll have a closed loop. We will use um, in selection the same KPI that we use at the back end in evaluating the firm and in their annual uh, business review or, or report card. So um, I think that would be useful for both the law firm and for us. And so I, I keep adding to your um, to my wish list and and maybe to your to do yep. list uh, as one piece of analytics. It would be great to to have an analytic that demonstrates spending aligned to KPI for the firms as well, so that you can you can um, immediately as part of that marry up the uh, the performance with the uh, the work allocation. Thanks. So that's that, that's that's very helpful. And I, and I have to say that's that is quite consistent with the kind of feedback um, that I've had from. 
uh, other general counsel um, that, that have been using the platform. Uh, not, not surprising. Uh, occasionally, I also get the question, what if the law firms are not interested in participating? Um, and uh, the response um, I give to that question is, I haven't yet had a law firm um, respond to a client to say, well, we understand you wish to use Pursuit, but um, uh, we're not interested in responding on the platform. So, so that hasn't happened yet. But um, uh, so, okay. So I'm conscious. I think we've got another uh, ten minutes maximum. Um, I, I might just put this slide up just in case um, if, if there are people out there that are interested in learning more about how Pursuit might be able to help the in-house legal team. Please just shoot me a an email at the email address there, jim at pursuit.com. Um, I'm not sure, uh, Victor, whether we've actually got the ability for questions to come through um, or... Um, Hi, everyone. Uh, they to answer your question, Jim, we do. So if anyone's interested in sending a question at this point, uh, feel free to use the chat tool. You should see on your lower right-hand side uh, if not, you may have to click on a button with a, a text box in it in order to make it appear. It should be on the bottom center of your of your screen if you're viewing this by your browser. So I might wait a few a minute or so for that, but um, uh, otherwise, if there are uh, no questions asked. We, we, we can we can then wrap up and let people get away a little bit a couple of minutes early. Jim, this is Joe. I'm going to put you on the spot and ask um, you to talk a little bit <laughs> about the subscription model. Uh, and we didn't apologize. Uh, we didn't uh, talk yep. about that, so I apologize. But yep. um, I'm guessing that just about everybody on the phone is saying, "Okay, interesting. So how much uh, is it going to cost?" Okay, so uh, you're absolutely right, Joe. You put me on the spot, but I'm more than happy to answer. So our, our platform is a subscri subscription model, so uh, we have an annual um, uh, license fee um, per user, and we have a minimum of 10 um, users. So that's an annu and the annual license fee for those 10 users is $35,000, so $3,500 per user. And that um, that figure decreases as the um, users increase number of users increase above um, ten. So um, so that's a minimum of thirty five thousand, and that allows for unlimited transactions and unlimited RFPs and spend through the platform. Um, uh, so that's the model. Um, we do have pilot periods too, where um, uh, we allow for, a, you know, we agree a certain pilot period where clients can um, uh, use the platform, um, generate RFPs, and, and then it helps us um, collate data in relation to those RFPs and be able to demonstrate the value um, during that pilot period before committing committing to a longer period. So um, hopefully that answers the question. Subscription-based model based on number of users. Um, and uh, uh, the the starting price for ten users um, is thirty five thousand for the for the year. I, I can uh, see Jim, here. I, I have a question. You, sorry, I had just sent to you uh, about five questions. All right. Okay. All right. Yep. I can see those. Let me just scroll through those. Um, Okay, so I have a question about capturing the final agreement on an AFA. Is there functionality or planned functionality for documenting um, a, uh, a statement of work, a statement of works? Okay, um, so um, everything on the platform gets captured. So whatever is included in, for example, a scope of work, um, let's say it forms part of the RFP, that gets captured on the platform, um, but that can be, you know, extracted and emailed around, but it's essentially, it, it forms part, if you like, of, let's say if I was just, jump, I'm still screen sharing, jumping into this card, it, it forms part of the RFP. Um, I've got another question. Does the tool have API 
capabilities to interface, I should have meant uh, to interface with matter management and other uh, e-billing tools. I should have answered this question. Thank you, um, Matt. The answer is yes. What, it's quite important. Um, one thing I should have said is what, what we don't do is seek to go beyond um, the RFP into matter management and e-billing. Um, we know most of the corporates out there already have their own e-billing and matter management platforms, so we just simply configure our API to be able to um, uh, uh, integrate with your e e billing or matter management system. So thanks, uh, Matt, for that question. Um, I've got one from Emily here. Does the decision to do a reverse auction have to be made at the outset? Um, look, currently it's made at the outset, but we have on our roadmap the decision, the um, ability to change it um, during during the course of uh, the matter. So that's that, that's the position there. But good question. Um, from the, uh, for the subscription model, is the number of users from both law firms and clients? No, actually, I should have said the um, number of users is client um, uh, users. So that the 10 will be uh, 10 within the legal or business or, or within the client team um, that will have access to the platform. At this stage, we do not charge law firms for e engaging on the platform. Um, that might, depending upon what features or, and what functionality we may be able to deliver law firms down the track, that may change. But at this stage, um, there's no uh, there's no charge for law firms to um, to engage on the platform. So I think, um, Victor, I answered those questions. I don't know if any more have come through. Uh, I have not received any. No? Did, did you see the one regarding the subscription model, or did you just answer that? Yeah, yes. Yeah, sorry, sorry just, I think oh. I just answered that one. Excellent. All right, so that means there's, I think there's only a couple of minutes before uh, top of the hour, so um, I think I could probably finish up there. Um, thank everyone who joined um, for, uh, for doing so, and as I said, I'll put up that final screen again. If you've got any questions um, that you know, I'd like to hear uh, or know more, please uh, feel free to, to shoot me an email at gmappursuit.com. Okay, thank you, every, uh, thank you um, everyone uh, very much for, for listening, and uh, I look forward to hopefully meeting you. Thank you, Jim, and uh, thank you, everyone, for participating today. I'd like to thank Pursuit thank and uh, the Legal Ops section for... Uh, providing this opportunity. Uh, thank you. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.